MCP is a protocol that lets AI agents interact with real-world tools in a modular way. Think of it as a bridge between an AI assistant and external APIs or systems. For example, if an AI needs to place a pizza order, it doesn't call the API directly. Instead, it uses an MCP client to send a structured request to an MCP server, which wraps the actual logic, like a place order tool. Now, I have already explained the fundamentals of MCP in another video. In this video, I'll walk you through the key components around MCP, how they fit together and what's happening across the ecosystem today. So let's get started. At a high level, an MCP system has three main parts, the AI agent, the MCP client, and the MCP server. Let's start with the AI agent. This is the decision maker. It receives a user prompt, breaks it down and figures out what actions need to be taken. For example, if you say, order a large vegetarian pizza from Buy Time Pizza, the agent decides it needs to check if the restaurant is open and then place the order. Now, the agent itself doesn't know how to talk to APIs or databases, and that's where the MCP client comes in. The MCP client is like the agent translator. It takes the agent's intent, like call the place order tool with these parameters, and sends a structured request to the appropriate MCP server. It handles things like HTTP request, authentication, and response formatting. Finally, there is the MCP server. This is where the real work happens. It wraps around your existing systems, maybe a REST API, a database, or even a third-party service, and exposes specific tools like check status, place order, or get inventory. So when the MCP client says, hey, call place order with these details, the MCP server runs the logic, talks to the real systems, and sends back a result. All of this happens in seconds, and to the user, it feels like the AI assistant just magically did it all. But behind the scenes, it's the AI agent making decisions, the MCP client making calls, and the MCP server doing the work. Note that MCP client and AI agent are two different roles, but in practice, they often live together inside the same application like Claude. So AI agent in this case, it's not just model or LLM. It's the full agent loop that wraps the model and decides when and how to use tools. You can think of it like a software logic built on top of a language model. It includes the cloud model in this case, maybe hosted or local, a tool decision logic, for example, I should call place order, and response formatting. MCB client is a separate software component like a library or a thin runtime. It's responsible for sending and receiving messages, handling authentication, and managing sessions with the MCP server. In case of cloud, for example, cloud desktop app, it plays both roles. It hosts the AI agent, the cloud model, and it also contains or embeds an MCP client that knows how to connect to MCP servers. Now, GPT-4 and cloud are different LLMs. ChatGPT uses GPT-4. Cloud uses cloud models. Until recently, ChatGPT didn't even use MCP at all. But now that's changed. OpenAI has started rolling out support for MCP-based custom connectors. That means you can now register your own MCP servers and ChatGPT will discover and call tools from them, just like cloud does. So user input layer is where the natural language prompt happens. AI agent parses user intent and select tools, MCP client acts as a bridge, format request, and handles auth, routing, etc. MCP server knows how to perform real tasks, wrap external APIs, and exposes callback tools. And the external APIs could be REST, gRPC, database, so on and so forth. All right, let's walk through how all these components work together with a simple real world example. So say the user types order a large vegetarian pizza from Buy Time Pizza. The AI agent receives this prompt and it passes the intent and figures out two things it needs to do. Check if Buy Time Pizza is currently open. If yes, call a tool to place the pizza order. Now, the agent doesn't call APIs directly. Instead, it hands off a structured request to the MCP client. The MCP client sends a call to request to the appropriate MCP server asking it to run a tool named check restaurant status with input like this. The MCP servers receives the request, 
talks to the restaurant backend, maybe a database or REST API, and replies with this. Great, the restaurant is open. Now, the agent calls another tool, place order, using MCP client again. And it's something like this. The MCP server processes this order, confirms it with the system, and returns this JSON. The MCP client passes this result back to the AI agent. The agent formats a final message and replies to the user. Your large vegetarian pizza from Byte and Pizza is on the way. ETA 25 minutes. Order ID BM84213. One user prompt triggered multiple tools. And behind the scenes, the AI agent, MCP client, and MCP server worked in sync to make it all happen. What makes MCP powerful is how modular and clean the architecture is. Each part does one job. The agent decides what to do, the client handles communication, and the server executes the real task. This separation makes the system easy to scale. So if you want to add a new tool, like say track delivery, just add it to the MCP server. The agent can discover and start using it. No need to write your core logic. It's also future-proof. If the API behind place order changes, you can only update the MCP server, not the AI agent or client. And because everything runs through defined tools, you get better observability and control. You always know which tool was used, with what input and what came back. That's why developers love MCP. It lets AI systems talk to the real world without turning into mess of fragile integrations. MCP is catching on fast, especially in AI-first tools and developer platforms. Anthropic's Cloud Desktop app already supports MCP out of the box. You can connect it to local tools, databases, even homegrown APIs and the agent just knows how to use them. Microsoft is also backing it. They have added MCP support to GitHub Copilot agents in VS Code and released c -sharp SDK to help developers build MCP servers in .NET. Even research tools like Perplexity are exposing their APIs over MCP, so agents can perform real-time web searches and feed that into conversations. The trend is clear. MCP is becoming the standard layer between AI agents and the real world. Modular, language agnostic, and developer-friendly. Now, if you want to start building with MCP, you don't need Langchain or any heavy framework to start using MCP. The protocol itself is lightweight. Just JSON RPC over STDIN, WebSockets, or HTTP. To build an MCP server, all you need is a simple service that exposes a list of tools. Each tool has a name, an input schema, and an output schema. For example, a place order tool might accept pizza size and toppings and return order confirmation with delivery time. You can write this server in any language. Python, TypeScript, c -sharp, Go. There are so many open source SDKs and examples out there. On the other side, MCP client is what the agent uses to discover tools and call them. If you are running a cloud app locally, it already includes an MCP client. You just point it to your server and it will figure out the available tools automatically. The client sends a call tool request with input and the server responds with a tool response. No complex contracts, just structured JSON. And because the tools are modular, you can start small. Maybe just one tool and grow the system incrementally. MCP isn't just a trend. It's becoming the standard way for AI agents to interact with real-world systems. The agent makes decisions, the MCP client handles the communication, and the server does the work. All in a clean modular flow. Whether you're building an internal AI tool, a coding assistant, or even just experimenting, MCP gives you a scalable way to plug your agent into real APIs and tools. And if you would like to see me build an MCP client and server from scratch, step by step, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to walk through the full setup in another video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.